In the first episode of this series, we talked about one of the oldest and most well-known fake tanks you can find. Although quite infamous, the KV-6 has lived more as a meme vehicle compared to other fakes which have genuinely led to a surprising amount of misinformation. Today's topic, however, has stayed just outside of common knowledge enough to truly confuse and mislead some to believe it was a real design. With it being German, this is only fed more by the uninformed nature of many who claim to be tank experts, but in reality only know some basic facts about World War II tanks. I don't say this to make fun of anyone in particular, because everyone starts somewhere, I only say it to explain why I think it has confused some. So join me today as we look at the story of the E-79. We interrupt today's video for a very special announcement. Finally, you can satiate your hunger for merch with a delicious sauerkraut and onion flavored shirt. Available in a range of colors, this design features just enough Zimrit to meet your tank's daily need. Check them out and get yourself one using the link down below. Now back to the video. The tank we are looking at today is most commonly known as the E-79, originating from the 1999 game Panzerfront for the original PlayStation and the Sega Dreamcast. Although the game itself is probably worthy of an entire dedicated video, we'll have to come back to that another time as today we are just looking at its most well-known tank. To start with, we can look over the specs of this machine, which thankfully the game itself provides us. The VK6600H Panzerkampfwagen E79 is a heavy tank armed with a 128mm Pac-43 L55 cannon as well as an MG34 hull-mounted machine gun. Measuring 10.4 meters long, 3.7 meters wide, and a little over 2.3 meters tall, this vehicle weighs in at 61 tons with a top speed of 35 kilometers per hour. For reference, this puts the tank around the size of the Tiger II, although a bit shorter. It is also unclear if this length is factoring in the gun barrel as well, but considering the proportions seem to be about the same as the Tiger II, I think we can safely assume it is. The armor of this tank, on the other hand, is a different story. The turret front has 200mm of armor sloped at 15 degrees, with 100mm on the side sloped at 38 degrees, and the rear 80mm plate sloped at 57 degrees. This gives the tank a distinct rounded appearance as if you took a Tiger II turret and squashed it. Moving on to the hull, we find the hull front having 180mm at 58 degrees, which likely applies to the lower plate as well. The sides and rear are 80mm thick, being sloped at 14 and 32 degrees respectively. All in all, this tank looks fairly similar to most mid to late war German designs, especially those in the E series, which it is more than likely based on. This is obviously aside from the turret, which only slightly resembles Tiger II's turret. Now with the general design of the tank out of the way, we can talk a bit about the tank's performance in the game before we wrap up with the fake history it has since inherited. I do want to take a moment here to recommend you try out Panzerfront for yourself if, like me, you were either born the same year it came out, or maybe missed it for another reason. The controls are a bit strange, but for being a 22-year-old game, it is a remarkably good tank simulator. With the exception of the fake tanks you play as, the models and overall gameplay still hold up fairly well today. You can relatively easily emulate the game, but since I don't want to risk linking the stuff for it below, I'll post them in my Discord, which you can join using the link in the description. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. In-game, the E-79 is probably one of the better tanks to play, with it being fairly slow but very well armored. This, coupled with a powerful cannon, makes it easily capable of dealing with the enemies you will face. I didn't play it in too many missions, but unlike the other tanks, you aren't as susceptible to penetrating hits, making it much easier. Despite the E-79 being overall a good vehicle, I definitely had the most fun playing with the Schnell Jagdpanzer with its jet turbines, but that's a subject for another day. Now we get to the part of the video where we discuss how this tank went from a pixelated vehicle in a game to something people actually think existed. It took a bit of digging, but with the help of the internet archive, I was able to recover an old page which could be one of the origin points of the fake history surrounding this tank. Here we also find one of the other common names the E-79 is known as, that being Schwarzwolf or Black Wolf. According to this page, the tank is loosely based on the Panther F prototypes and the Schmalterm, albeit the turret was elongated to fit a larger 100mm gun. 
This armament is said to be capable of 140 millimeters of penetration at 2,000 meters, as well as having an early fire control system and stabilizer. Things only get more absurd as it goes on to claim the tank would have infrared detection systems, a rangefinder, and a new armor coating known as brimstone, among some other equally ridiculous technologies. Brimstone would apparently deflect incoming rounds, making the tank all but invulnerable to attacks. Powering this beast would be taken care of by the Maybach HL-234, a favorite for these late war projects. The entire design process was supposedly done independently by the Waffen SS, and conveniently all documents were later destroyed just as it was ready for a mock-up in March of 45. Only some scraps were reportedly found by the Allies, who were, quote, astonished at the range of technologies. This and likely other posts like it have caused some of the more gullible or more frankly stupid people who come across them to actively try to justify them for inclusion in games such as War Thunder and World of Tanks. All this is made even more amusing and somewhat sad when you consider that the description doesn't even get the details of the tank correct. Not only did the German military never use a 100mm cannon for their tanks, but the E79 itself is supposed to have a 128mm. The other advanced technologies slapped onto it just go to make the vehicle even more absurd, with the vast majority of them barely existing if they existed at all in World War II. Still, despite all this, some people do believe it or will go on to even make variants of a non-existent vehicle. This brings us to the strangely named Panzer Jägerwagen E79-128. Already the name gives this away as a fake, with Panzer Jägerwagen not being a real term used to designate vehicles. The creator of this design claims it to be a historical extrapolation, despite that extrapolation not actually relating to any historical vehicle. According to them, it would have entered combat sometime in 1948 had the war continued, and not much else is said about the specifics of its design. Overall, the E79 is a great example of what can happen when you leave fake tanks in the hands of people who have questionable motivations. As I reiterate in just about every video in this series, I have absolutely nothing wrong with fake tanks in games. However, when those tanks are picked up by those who truly believe some of the German wonder weapon nonsense, it quickly spreads like a cancer. Although this doesn't make alternate history or fantasy designs bad, it certainly can cause them to be disliked by more serious historians. Unfortunately, there's very little we can do to stop those who cause the misleading information, but we can, at the very least, share the real story of them and stop more people from perpetrating the lie. So if you ever run into someone trying to tell you that the E-79 or any of the tanks we cover in this series are real, be sure to send them a link to it, and with some luck you can change their mind. Thank you as always for watching and liking the video if you enjoyed it. Huge shout out to my channel members who support the channel each month. I know we've been doing a lot of these fake tank videos lately, and some of you may miss the other series, but those will be coming back soon. These just tend to be easier to complete within the week so I can keep consistent weekly videos for you. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next time I post a video in whichever series you like most, and I will see you then.